Good afternoon. I'm Paul Boyce with uh, Vitro Architectural Glass, and I'm here with the Advocacy Committee update today. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about our one pagers that we have out there. And as uh, some of you may may remember, these are designed uh, to be as they're called one pagers, so that they're a quick reference for for any legislators or industry stakeholders that, that may be interested in a, in a key issue, such as the bird friendly or, or the global warming potential. And these, these are downloadable from the NGA website and they do not require a password. So anybody can get in and get access to these and, 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 and get to them for their use. Possible upcoming one pagers that are out there. And I say possible because uh, there's work going on under the protective glazing task group and they're working on school security and fire resistive versus fire protective documents. And if there's a need that we need to do some advocating there, either through through, uh, through the government bodies of, of uh, trying to go to a regulation type style or to the code groups themselves, then, then we can possibly get into developing one pages for there. And then the, the last comment I'd have here is we're always open for ideas if somebody's got an issue where NGA and NGA members should be advocating for, for a specific product or a specific code issue or a specific regulation issue, then please bring those to, to myself or any of the NGA staff or anyone on the advocacy committee, and, and we'll, we'll be happy to work on developing uh, another one pager. This is the Buy Clean California Act, and a lot of you may remember this as, uh, as Assembly Bill 262, but since it's now passed into uh, regulation, it's, it's officially called the Buy Clean California Act. And um, we did develop this one pager there. You can see it's in the same type of format. And uh, we got this over to the California Department of General Services, and they ultimately agreed with our recommendation here and matched the uh, GWP recommendation that's in their uh, regulation at the 20% above the flat glass industry-wide um, uh, global warming potential that's in our EPD. The, uh, I think the new news here is, is there in blue, and that's that as of July 1st, you know, just uh, a couple of weeks ago at this point, they, they are going to start requiring that the EPDs be, be available for, for specific products like glass and that the EPD shows that the product meets that 20% uh, above the industry-wide flat glass GWP number. Uh, as another point here, if you're interested in learning some more, NGA's uh, June Thirsty Thursday the webinar that was out there, that was, was understanding the Buy Clean California Act. And that has a lot of additional information. Uh, so, so if you're interested in that, you can go out to the website and download that. We also have uh, a couple other things going on here. There's a, there should be an update from the California Department of General Services, probably right around the time of the NGA glass conference in January, where we're tentatively scheduled to get updates from them every six months. So that should be the next one. And uh, we'll, we'll be excited to see how, how the the uh, regulation is progressing and how the enforcement is progressing on their side. There's also a new regulation out there called the Buy Clean Colorado Act. And uh, we, we are looking at sending this same document since it was done pretty much in a general format to make this recommendation 20% above the industry-wide global warming potential. We're going to go to the Buy Clean Colorado folks and, and make that same recommendation to them. There's also some discussions going on at ASHRAE 189, the, uh, the green code, where, where we're gonna be making the same type of recommendations for them and, and, and we'll see where those goes and if we need to get other people involved. The, uh, the Buy Clean Colorado Act, that does have a lot of strong support from the architect community out there in discussions that, that uh, several of us have had with those folks. We can, we can see that they're, they're pulling in a lot of information from the architect community, and that's good. Uh, I think a lot of the folks that are involved in sustainability on the, on the, the architect side of the coin have also seen this, this one pager here and hopefully are, are, are well aligned with, with uh, participating at that level. And I think the last comment I'll mean just uh, to be sure that people know what GWP is, you know, it, global warming potential or GWP, it's a measure of the greenhouse gas emissions. And it's, it's where all the greenhouse gases are reported as an equivalent amount of carbon dioxide. 
and it, it's part of the normal EPD process. So any flat glass manufacturer or any product manufacturer for that point that's doing an EPD, you can look at that document and go in there and find the global warming potential and it'll be expressed in the equivalent amount of carbon dioxide. This is talking about the, the daylighting at the IBC. This, this is, is proceeding currently as a glass informational bulletin. And uh, it's something that the industry will, will ultimately also see out there in Glass Magazine. It's, it's creating a minimum level of daylighting in educational facilities that, uh, that we don't want those facilities to go below. This was uh, originally a G GICC proposal and uh, it, it went, went to the uh, committee code action hearings and unfortunately it didn't pass back in, uh, in April and May there. So, so Tom Zaremba, Tom Culp and Nick, Nick Rezestar have been doing an excellent job working with uh, a lot of the folks out there to try and make sure that we can, can get this uh, through the public comment process which the comments were just uh, recently due here back on July 2nd. And then those hearings are coming up on, on the, uh, the 21st to 28th in Pittsburgh. And, and it'll be a wait and see to see if we can get this passed through there. But hopefully if it's, uh, if it's successful, that then, then we'll be able to move forward with, with this as a new requirement. If it's not successful, then that's one route where we're developing advocacy, uh, one pager, and then we'll be able to go to U.S. or State Department of Education uh, uh, folks and, and talk about daylighting and how it makes teachers' jobs easier. So, so this isn't guaranteed to turn into an advocacy one pager document, but it just depends on, on how we do at the code hearings coming up in the fall. This also shows a couple possible uh, uh, advocacy publications, but, but just to be clear, there are certainly some new publications coming out. There's a glass informational bulletin on, on daylighting, and uh, th there's, a, there's an existing class technical paper out there now that was originally published back in 2012, was updated in 2019. That's being turned into a GIB and will also, also be uh, shown in Glass Magazine as well. Then there's the, uh, the EPD uh, LCA Glass Technical Paper that's out there, and that, that defines the terms and, and gives a little bit of, bit of uh, definitions on, on the acronyms that are used, which there's quite a bit of acronyms in, in the sustainability area around glass. So, so it's, it's a quick read and it's worth taking a look at if there's any questions on those. And then it also references our EPD education uh, class technical paper. And uh, for those of you that have seen that, it, it uh, is primarily focused on, on giving some guidance on how to look at the EPD. And then in some cases where EPDs should not be compared to each other, it talks about that. The International Year of Glass is coming up next year. 2022, this, this uh, was an effort out there by a lot of folks uh, as an NGA members that uh, basically petitioned the UN and the UN ultimately agreed, as it says there back on May 18th, that uh, 2022 will be deemed the year of glass. And we're, we're fully anticipating, you know, since there were so many people involved in petitioning to, to, uh, to get this deemed the year of glass, there's going to be a lot of local events as well in different countries, diff different states, different provinces. The, uh, the U.S. is planning a glass day in Washington, D.C. That date's yet to be determined. So there's lo lots of places for folks to get involved. If you're recognizing any of these names or dealing with any of these folks, uh, you know, feel free to, to question them on it and perhaps you can get you and your company uh, directly involved as well. This is the um, talking about the web, web page for advocacy and this is constantly being updated. So this is really just a reminder that uh, there's some new resources out there. So really you want to get out there, visit the page, look at the latest activities, look at some of the latest links that are out there. And again, uh, petition the group if there's any ideas for things that need to be added, any resources that we need to be considering, please, please reach out to us and let us know. This is showing a little bit of more detail about the webpage for advocacy. As you can see, it's set up in the pull down uh, accordion type menus where you can see the, the main topics there and then you can expand the ones that you, that you want to learn more about. This, this is uh, sh showing, showing the uh, members only codes and standards. This is a new benefit to members this year. So again, just a reminder to go out there and visit this page. 
And as you can see down there in the bottom right where the big arrow is pointing, you know, we're, we're asking, do you, do you have uh, new questions or new information that you'd like to see here? And if so, you can submit those through the website. That's really the, the bulk of the advocacy committee update. If there's specific questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or to staff. And uh, I do want to mention that we, we do have a September meeting uh, planned that's going to be in person. This will be at the end of glass build on September 15th. And uh, I think the NGA portion of, of that will be a conference on the 15th from 8 a.m. till 2 p.m. that day. And it's going to be done in a, in a presentation discussion style so that we can uh, eliminate a lot of the, uh, the parliamentary type things, so, such as approval to minutes and the call to the orders and so forth. And that way we can fit a lot more in in those sessions and um, uh, the information for the sessions on the website, the registration is open. And again, this is going to be an in-person meeting. So I'm looking forward to, to getting back out there and seeing some faces and catching up live in person with folks as we go. And that's it for advocacy. At this point, I'll turn it over to uh, Aaron Thompson for the Fabricating Committee update. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. I am Aaron Thompson, the chair of the Fabricating Committee, and my committee vice chair is Bobby Chestnut. We have several technical liaisons. Um, in Mirror, there's Dave Evans. Energy is Helen Saunders. Insulating is Jeff Haberer. Laminating is Julie Schimmelpenny. Uh, Rick Wright handles tempering. Protective glazing is Vaughn Schaus. Uh, fire rated is Kevin Norcross. And last but certainly not least, in decorative, we have Michael Sikora. So these are the documents um, coming up in these slides, which we have been working on since January. Um, you'll get to see some that have been published, some that are currently work items, and then there's a few upcoming work items which will happen in the future. Security glazing built on the already published security glazing document um, to make it a little bit more specific for schools. The reusability and recyclability of mirror products was formerly green aspects of mirror and installation techniques designed to prolong the life of float, flat glass mirrors both uh, completed their five-year review. The school security glazing, um, there's a little more information up there on the screen now. It uh, was a GTP, a glass technical paper, which was published this February and helps identify test standards, um, among other things, for the different applications of safety glazing um, from forced entry to ballistic attack all the way up through a combination of forced entry and ballistics. In the decorative area, uh, there are three GTPs at ballot currently. The first two were published in 2015 and are updates to that version. Uh, types of decorative glass is a new GTP that's being worked on and is at ballot. And there are also a couple items in progress. Defining acceptable color variants um, looks to find a delta E number for decorative glass products and heat formed pattern and 3D glass is an AIA presentation, which is being worked on. Uh, if you've been keeping score at home, you'll know that the decorative committee has been doing an outstanding job getting documents published in an effort to build some of the content, content for an upcoming decorative glazing manual. So thanks to all of you who have helped out with that effort. And I know we're all excited to see that manual, uh, hopefully late next year. The glass technical paper, Best Practices for Installed Painted Decorative Glass, was featured as an informational bulletin in Glass Magazine in the March issue of this year. So find your copy of Glass Magazine if you'd like to take an in-depth look at that content. In Protective Glazing, Best Practices for Bird-Friendly Glazing Design is a new GTP that uses a prescriptive approach it lists the requirements to be met in order for the glazing design to be considered bird friendly. These prescriptive requirements are things like size, contrast of markers, marker spacing, surface application, et cetera. Uh, in addition, there will be two AIA presentations covering school security and bird friendly glazing. And these are just a couple of examples how we're leveraging the work done 
to write GTPs to then help create other inform informative content for our industry. In laminating, the use of glass in guardrails, uh, formerly use of laminated glass in glass railing systems, has been updated using the 2021 IBC. There are two GTPs which are up for their five-year review, design considerations for laminated glazing, and dynamic glazing for high-performance buildings. Task group members are needed to help review and update these existing documents. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with Amber Johnson, um, she can help you figure out which one you want to be involved with and get you signed up for the correct task group. The glass technical paper, Glass Floors and Stairs, was featured as an informational bulletin in the April issue of Glass Magazine. If you have misplaced your issue, your April issue, or any of your other issues, um, remember that you can always visit glassmagazine.com and see any of the past issues um, and read that fantastic content. The current mirror GTPs, which cover the various types, proper storage, handling, fabrication, installation, and cleaning, are going to be combined into one document um, to create a new design guide. So look for that. In the, in the future. Fire rated has two work items in progress. Other benefits of fire rated glazing will be a new GTP discussing the advantages of fire rated glazing can offer. And our current AIA presentation, fire rated glazing today is set to expire later this year after being available for the last three years. So we have an opportunity to make updates and then republish. Again, get in touch with Amber Johnson if you'd like to be part of that effort. In energy, there are several work items in progress, including two product category rules documents and a couple of new GTPs. We need your input for the processed glass PCR. Uh, specifically, we'd like to know if this should be an editorial update or a substantive update. Uh, if you have an opinion, please get in touch with Irmala and she will record your feedback and pass that along to the groups updating that document. In insulating, there's one document at ballot. PIB compatibility testing provides a test method for glazing component compatibility with IGU primary sealant PIB. Please review and vote on that ballot if you haven't already. Currently there are in process, there are two new GTPs. One is bent IGUs that will cover the design and insulation considerations of bent insulating glass unit design. The other is VIG fabrication, and that will address concerns with adopting the use of VIGs into existing fabrication lines. Performance improvements of IGUs and guidelines for the appearance of IGUs are ready for their five-year review and they need volunteers for that effort. So we also need volunteers for a new GTP, uh, Secondary Sealants. This title, I believe was chosen to replace the first title or working title, which was Design Considerations for the Structural Bite Dimension of a Silicone Secondary Sealant in a Dual, seed, dual Sealed IGU or DCFTSBD OSSSDSI, you know, for short. Um, so if you'd like to get involved with any of those items, again, Amber Johnson is the right one to, to get in contact at NGA. And last, but certainly not least, in tempering, the iridescence GTP will be updated with the new standard, uh, and marking and labeling GTP will be updated to include tempered glass. That concludes uh, the update for the Fabricating Committee. I want to say a huge thank you to the NGA staff, all the technical liaisons, the task group chairs and all volunteers for the work done so far this year. If you'd like to get involved, again, Amber Johnson uh, is the person you should contact and she can get you um, put on the correct list for the right task group or task groups. Uh, if you'd like to download any of the technical resources, you can find them all um, online at the NGA website. And now I believe we'll hear from John Griggs uh, with an update for the forming committee. Thank you, Aaron. My name is John Griggs. I'm the, the committee chair for the forming committee. Uh, Dave Dooley is the vice chair for the forming committee from a NSG. Uh, we wanted to give a brief update on the activities in the forming committee. 
We have two GTPs to discuss. The GTP on general EPD education, which was featured in Glass Magazine's January 2021 edition, and an update to the GTP on recyclability of architectural glass products, which was published in June of 2021. Both GTPs are available at glass.org. The first GTP, General EPD Education, was written for those professionals who regularly deal with environmental impacts of building components. It has been observed that people are trying to compare EPD values. The purpose of this document is to highlight the challenges with those comparisons. Comparing EPD values is not encouraged, nor always appropriate, and could result in misleading conclusions. The second GTP is an update to recyclability of architectural glass products. It was originally published in 2014. Interest in recycling architectural glass products continues to grow. Uh, the specific updates to the document include details on recycling glass in the float glass manufacturing process, a list of suggested topics to discuss with the glass recycler, and it also touches on new options for recycling laminated glass. Some of you may have seen the GTP on protecting glass against weld splatter was featured in May 2021's edition of Glass Magazine. NGA and several member companies are working with Building Transparency on the potential to develop the glass category for their Embodied Carbon and Construction Calculator, or EC3. This tool is for benchmarking sustainability data. We are early on in the process as the group has only met twice so far. A brief update on California AB 262. Despite known issues with the legislation, California DGS started to gauge global warming potential on July 1st, 2021. When bidding public works projects in California, please feel free to check out the FAQs at glass.org. Now I'd like to turn it over to Matt Camper for the installing committee updates. Thank you, John. Um, I'm Matt Camper with the installing committee, uh, along with uh, Steve Dean. He is the vice chair, Steve Dean with Permis Talisa. Uh, the installing committee is comprised of the installation side, the glazers and the glazer community. The first thing we have now available, the new commercial fenestration systems manual. This has been in progress since 2012. We had over 42 volunteers. Thank you so much. Putting this together in the last two years, the NGA staff has, has done a great job of compiling all of that past and current information. And you can see the manual covers system descriptions, design parameters, pre-construction, as well as shop drawings. Uh, specifically, we introduced design intent and talking about how we can present what is correct and proper to the architects as well as constructability. The systems, we also talk about installation and proper installation methods. We talk about industry standards as well as building codes and other standards for the glazing community. So that is available at glass.org. We also have an updated guide to glass glazing, glazing requirements for model building codes. This is again, a little deeper dive into the building codes, the things that are necessary. So it's a little bit broader audience we target not only the glazing community, but architects, building inspectors, reviewers, and specification writers. That's also available at glass.org. Current activities here in the installing committee, out to ballot is our thermal bridging that should be voted on and hopefully available in September by the time of glass build in Atlanta. We also have two things in process. Please feel free to volunteer and join us. It's on specifications. Steve Dean is heading up the specification subcommittee. We also have a, an article coming out in response to requests from um, our NGA members to do a, a, an article on mock-ups. And so Katie Devlin has put together for Glass Magazine a mock-ups article that should be out before the end of the year. And upcoming hasn't started yet. We're gonna be looking for putting together a subcommittee for frameless shower enclosures and an installation guide. So the fabricating committee has put together a design guide already so the installing committee is going to take that information and add to it and talk about panels and tolerances and hardware and the other types of maintenance and cleaning and things that are pertinent to what the glazers need to know in order to properly use this design guide and its application in the field. And lastly, uh, myglassclass.com, there's over 60 online courses that we have available. You have a 50% discount as an NGA member. Also, we're excited. We have 14 courses that are now available in Spanish. So we hope that that serves your needs. And if you have any other suggestions, thoughts, uh, please let us and or the staff at NGA know. We'd be happy to 
listen and do our best to meet, meet your requests and needs. This ends the, uh, the component part of the installing committee. The in-person component of this meeting will happen during glass build over in Atlanta in September. And we just wanted to say thank you to all the volunteers at all the committees at all the levels for all that you do and that you make possible for us here. So thank you and wish you all the best. As a fabricator, Glass Build America is a really good opportunity to get to know all of your suppliers in person. It's a great place to go see all the new products and new features that are coming out in our industry. And it's a fabulous learning opportunity with all the educational sessions. What I gained by attending Glass Build was seeing all the different facets of the industry and the collaboration between fabricators, glazers, suppliers, manufacturers, all of those pieces coming together in one space. And it helps us be on the cutting edge and ahead of our competition.